Okay, folks, Jordan here, today with another computer video. And today is not a Dell, but it should hopefully be interesting nonetheless, despite the OEM difference. Let's get into this. This is a compact Presario 5441 computer, I would guess from around 1999, as a lower end computer offering in compact's Presario lineup for the consumer market. This machine in particular features an AMD K62 processor running at 475 megahertz. Originally shipped with, in my case, 96 megabytes of RAM, the Seagate 8 gig hard drive, I believe it was 8.4 gigs original capacity, a CD-ROM drive, floppy drive, and Windows 98 second edition pre-installed. So this machine I got as a gift from a uh, fellow resident back in my old town, although I still technically lived there, but whatever, as he didn't really need this machine anymore. So I did a little bit of computer work and this was many, many years ago. I've had this machine for many years. So recently showing it in the spotlight has actually been a little bit of a change for, well, me and doing stuff. So yeah, anyways, so this machine has been sitting for a bit. It is yellowed, which doesn't surprise me because it was mostly sitting in front of the sun. So oops. And then another thing too, this was owned by a smoker. So that didn't help things any. So there's still a lot of these little crevices that are filled with dust and whatever. So this machine has seen a bit of an interesting life. It still works amazingly. So at least as long as this video is concerned, we should be able to demonstrate it for you all. And mainly because I actually got the original Windows 98 second edition reinstalled on the hard drive. So we'll definitely be giving that a little bit of a look-see. It might look very similar to another compact I've looked at on my channel. Interestingly enough though, and I find this funny, the compact quality assurance label was actually peeled off and moved to the back of the case because you could tell where it originally sat right there. So technically it wasn't broken, it was just repositioned. So somebody was very clever when it came to that. So <laughs> had to share that for a minute there. But anyways, so here's the back of a 5441. Mine obviously is not in the best of shape. You might be able to tell there's a little bit of dirt down here. This would probably all clean up a little bit of uh, SOS and whatnot could probably fix up this metal case, but I'm not too concerned about it. But what really gets people, and because I haven't really ever taken the time to clean this computer out, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but if you look in the power supply, might be able to see all the cigarette nicotine and crap that's kind of built up inside the power supply there. So that's delicious. But anyways, so here's the rear IO. We have your standard uh, PS2 keyboard and mouse, two USB ports, which would be 1.1 speeds, obviously. Serial port, parallel port, onboard video, which is actually part of the chipset. This has like a, I forget what the SIS chipset is, but yeah, it's an SIS chipset, so yeah pretty typical of the late 90s budget computers, especially ones on AMD or Cyrix. There's your joystick port, and it has a two-channel onboard audio, which is actually pretty decent. Probably not the best, but you know, it's whatever. Down below, obviously, you have your PC uh, standard uh, wind modem or whatever uh, PCI, I meant to say. I can English today, definitely for sure. And then we have a later edition from the original owner, an ethernet card. Specifically, this is a 3Com, it's a fast Etherlink XL, which is actually supported by Windows 98 natively, which is pretty nice. So out of the box, this thing will actually have access to the internet, so I don't have to add something else, which is pretty nice. Now, unlike a lot of PCs of the day, this one uses a top shell, which you have to pull the whole thing off in order to get access to the internals of the machine. It would normally be held in with three screws, but obviously these systems, uh, back when I originally had them, did not get the best of love. So the screws are mostly gone. I need to order like a kit of screws or something or go to the hardware store, but amidst this uh, outbreak at the moment as of the time of this video, not gonna happen. But um, yeah, and it's also really tight fit too because of the fact that uh, this case and its metals are not exactly the greatest, so I'm gonna have to get it off like that. Don't try that at home, kids, especially if you don't have rubber feet. So it just comes off like this, and then you have access to all the internals of the computer inside. So let me pick you guys up here. Now, you're not 
immediately able to access everything inside the case. This is one of those where you have to move the power supply out of the way annoyingly. I'm not gonna do that because really there's nothing too interesting inside, but we will set this down here once we get a look at the top and kind of peek inside. There you can see the CPU heatsink down there for the, uh, I forget what socket this uses, but it's not too important. So let's go ahead and lay it down on its side here. Let's see if we can get some better lighting on this. So let's take a look at some of the more interesting aspects of this computer's motherboard, specifically because this is actually a Gigabyte motherboard. You can see down there the Gigabyte logo. This uses a Gigabyte GA-5SMM motherboard in the case of this particular system. I'm not sure what the extra M is supposed to mean. I believe this is just your standard Gigabyte GA-5SM board with a compact BIOS. And speaking of the BIOS, it is actually down here, your Award BIOS version 1.2B. Not sure if that's actually Flash BIOS compatible. I would assume that it is. You just got to do it through like an DOS or something. There you can see the chipset, the SIS5595. And there's also the CR2032 backup battery right next to a fan header. This machine uses a combo of PCI and ISA slots, although one of them is a shared PCI and ISA slot, so you have to pick one or the other. You do get one dedicated ISA slot and two dedicated PCI slots. What's nice about this, like I mentioned, was that the original owner added this Ethernet card, which is a 3Com Fast Etherlink XL PCI, which there you can see the socket for the boot ROM, which this does not have installed. And then there's the... Uh, Lucent Win Modem, which doesn't have the connector for down there on the motherboard. And that would be used for doing, I believe, just passing through the sounds of the modem, like when it's dialing through to the sound card on the motherboard. This is a Win Modem, so I think it does all that through the software, which would make sense. Speaking of the audio, it's down there on the motherboard. Let me see if I can zoom into it. Yep, there we go. You can see it's an ESS1938, what's also known as the Solo One. It actually has DOS drivers, which is pretty cool. So when we boot this up, you'll actually see the drivers initialized for DOS. So if you did like the restart in MS-DOS mode, you would be using those drivers. This machine also uses three PC100 sticks of RAM. I've been hearing on the internet some conflicting reports about how this could either be a maximum of 384 megabytes or a maximum of 768 megabytes of RAM. I'd be meaning to lean towards the 768 megs of RAM because I believe I've run uh, 512 megs of RAM in this machine in the past and it worked just fine. So that would be my guess. But still, maybe it has like one of those things where the official maximum is 384 megabytes but in reality, you can actually have a maximum of 768 megabytes of RAM, depending on whether you use three 128 meg sticks or three 256 meg sticks. It's kind of similar to that of my compact Persignia Desktop 1000, where it actually used a, uh, uh, I think it was a, a maximum of 768 megabytes of RAM officially. Couldn't tell you for sure but at least that's what I did with mine for a bit while I was running Windows XP. That was a long time ago, by the way. And then just real briefly down here, you get a bit of a glimpse of the heatsink, which as you can tell was owned by a smoker. I need to really clean this computer, but and I, well, I, I, I can English. I want to do a full disassembly if I were to do something like that. And even still, like, I don't know if this machine would be something I'd want to hang on to just because if it's otherwise, you know, the yellowed and the smoker and, AMD K62 and yeah, all that fun stuff, but I digress anyways. So we put this machine back up. You can get a look at the hard drive, which is one of these rubber coated Seagates, which fortunately in this case, it looks like the rubber hasn't started disintegrating yet. This is the original hard drive to the computer. Don't know if we can get you in here to get a little look at the label, not very well, but this is the original 8.4 gig hard drive. And one thing that's interesting about the system here is that Compaq actually put all the original uh, hardware, including the Compaq part number, on the side, on the inside of the case. So you could actually figure out the part numbers for all your stuff. So we can actually get a bit of an idea as to what this actually would have shipped with when it was new. So my guess is that that's the motherboard without the processor, 32-speed CD-ROM drive. And here's what's really interesting. It looks like 
this was custom ordered to have more RAM than the original because I believe these machines shipped new with 64 megs of RAM, but this must have been a custom order for 96 megs of RAM, hence the additional 32 meg stick there. 8.4 gig hard drive, a 110 watt power supply, which is actually pretty small. There you can see the processor at AMD K62 at 475 megahertz. There you can see a 56K modem, cables, the battery, heat sink, and then the floppy disk drive, the 1.44 meg floppy drive. Very interesting. And then it's also interesting is that on the side of the case here, if you're doing some expansion, which I don't know why they would have the sticker covering the case if you're actually planning on doing this, but they at least nicely put out some cutouts in the case for if you're going to do CD-ROM or hard drive in each slot. I believe the reason why this is is because maybe Compaq still was at this time using the Quantum Bigfoot hard drives, you know, those five and a quarter inch hard drives, and maybe they had a configuration where you could order a Quantum Bigfoot hard drive to go in one of these five and a quarter inch bays. Fortunately, this one does not use one of them Bigfoot drives. It just uses your standard three and a half inch hard drive. But it would have been interesting if this was ordered with a five and a quarter inch hard drive just sitting in one of these bays. That'd be really interesting if it even still worked, you know, one of those sorts of cases. So I think with all that having been shown, let's go ahead and hook this machine up and I'll briefly show what's on the hard drive. I only really just have the original Windows 98 second edition on the hard drive, what would have shipped on this machine when it was new. I haven't bothered to install any software yet just because of the fact that, well, it's a new install. I just wanted to do it for this video, but mainly because the CD-ROM drive here is actually broken. This is not the original CD-ROM drive. I don't know where it would have went to. I think it might've went to something else, but I think I've got it in storage somewhere, but I'll have to look the next time I can get a chance to. This is obviously a later, I think this is a 52 speed or maybe it was a 40 speed CD-ROM drive, something like that, but it doesn't work. So that sucks. But either way, it should be enough material that makes it interesting enough. I mean, it's Windows 98, so I guess it's interesting in its own right, but hopefully what's included will make for an interesting video. There's not too much installed, just the, you know, the basic Windows 98 install. I believe there would have been more uh, like software and games when the machine was new. I just had the base OS uh, recovered onto the hard drive just for the sake of having something that would boot and run. So hopefully that makes it interesting enough, like I mentioned, for a video. So let's get this case back on here and plug it in and fire it up. All right, so here we have it up on the desk. Let's go ahead and get it turned on. One thing that's definitely present is the CPU fan sound. You can definitely hear it. And here we are booting up Windows 98. This computer currently has 192 megs of RAM installed. So it definitely does have a little bit more RAM than what it originally shipped with, just because of the fact that, you know, this is apparently what I left in it when I took it from home. I mean, whatever, I guess it works, right? So it does pause here for a bit. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's trying to initialize drivers because it eventually does flash the sound drivers up on the screen here, as you can see. But eventually it will get into Windows you can see all the stuff there on the screen in case you needed to set that stuff up. Now you could actually press OK here, but Windows does it for you, so I don't have to touch anything. Now I will say it wasn't really all that easy to get this working. It was easy to restore the image from a CD. <clears throat> Excuse me and get it onto the hard drive and booting and everything. But for some reason, once you get it onto the computer, it had some issues as far as launching things. Initially, I couldn't even launch anything as far as double clicking on desktop icons or anything inside of the launcher down there, or even the start menu, like nothing would launch. I would have to use the run dialog, which is how I had to run some updates as far as fixing Windows 98 was concerned. And I mean, I did that and there you can see it's all functional as far as everything's concerned, but it was not easy. But I got it functioning for this video so we can now take a look at things from their 
almost original glory. Of course, I've done the Internet Explorer 6 update. I think that was probably one of the main contributors and uh, so on and so forth. Now, I also will say, bear with me, this mouse is kind of garbage. The ball has lost all of its rubberized texture on the bottom, and so it makes it really hard sometimes to use the mouse. So forgive me. That's just what we're going to have to deal with for this video. I would, I would grab my other mouse, but it's in a uh, storage bin somewhere, and that's, this was most convenient. So anyways, so here we have what's in the start menu. We have a built-in technician, which I think was on my other compact, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe we're still having those issues as far as launching stuff from the start menu and whatnot is concerned. It's down here somewhere. You would open up this program and it would allow you to, if you had any issues with your computer, connect with a compact person and they would help fix your computer. If I'm not mistaken, that's what this is. So basically it's just like your remote desktop software, anything of that nature. Oh, nice. They just locked the computer up. It just locked the computer up. Useful. All right, I'll be back in a second. Screw you, Scandish! All right, let's try this again. I have not tested this image very well with this computer. It is supposed to be for this computer or a very similar enough model. Uh, at least that's what the re quick restore disk actually had was this model listed under it. So who's to say, I'm not sure what the deal is. Maybe it's something to do with one of the devices on this computer that's causing an issue. I haven't bothered to look into it, but it's just completely, but I would say cantankerous. And even a clean install of Windows 98 would perform better than this. I'm not really sure what the deal is. So I don't know, maybe this won't stay on here permanently. It might just go back to a clean install of Windows 98 second edition. We'll have to see. Heck, I'd even probably do Windows Millennium Edition just to really screw with people. Anyways, back in the start menu here. Let's see what else we can try to launch here. So we got that compact remote support software I just tried launching down there that didn't work. Um, it also came with a couple of free internet service provider trials. I believe this is the one that Compaq usually tried to sell with you when you bought the computer when it was brand new and that way they could receive some money on the sale of a low cost internet PC like this was, or pretty similar to. And of course they offered America Online, which is pretty typical for the late 1990s. There's your compact registration. This actually does have a copy of Microsoft Works preloaded. But again, for some reason, like I can't seem to get it to work. Ha, see what I did there? But I mean, yeah, you can see exactly what it's doing. It's really annoying. So there's no way for me to logically like try to Dang it. To try to run... Stupid mouse. See what I was telling you about? This mouse sucks. Um, so there's no way I can launch it from the start menu, which is kind of annoying. I don't know what's going on or what's causing it to act like this, but we can take this, we can actually copy it, throw it into the run, and we can run the program, which I haven't launched it before. Click the OK button to see a short demonstration of how to get started with works. Uh, I think I'm good. But we can just go ahead and open up the word processor, for example. Well, we don't have a printer installed, so it just sucks to you. But there you can see Microsoft Works. As it mentioned on the splash screen, this is Works 4.5 for Windows 95, although it's not meant for Windows 95. It's currently running on Windows 98 Second Edition, so a bit of a weird edition, but hey, it works. So, yeah. You can do your word processing stuff on here. Gives you a nice handy help thing onto the side here. But we're not gonna think with that for too long. Ah, this mouse sucks. We have this mouseware program. Um, stupid, ah, Jesus. It's, just, it's almost easier to roll the ball, but then even then it doesn't work. So this mouse just needs to have a new ball or needs to be thrown away. Yeah, even then, it doesn't work either. So we're going to have to do the same thing of going into programs. Flipping ah, heck. I wonder if it's got something to do with the registry. I couldn't tell you for sure. But anyways, so I wonder if we just take this, throw it into here. There we go. 
So what this basically allows you to do, because there's no uh, scroll wheel on this mouse, basically you can take both buttons, hold them down, and you can make it do whatever you want it to do, such as the middle mouse button, or you can have it act as a scroll wheel, like a makeshift scroll wheel. Like if you hold down the scroll button on the laptop and you move the mouse up and down, it would act as the scroll wheel, something like that. That's basically what this software allows you to do. It came with the computer, so what the heck, right? And really that's about it, other than the uh, compact easy access button utility, which again, I can't run from the start menu, so I'm gonna have to do it from the thing down there. I still don't understand why that stuff's not working. It's just really bizarre. I do technically have this keyboard. It's sitting in storage and it's got a broken key, but you know, whatever. But this allows you to customize all these buttons that you would normally have on top of the keyboard and do certain functions like the easy access to the internet, uh, compact, email, shopping, printing, all that fun stuff. And you can customize these to do basically whatever, including an access button for the built-in technician that Compaq offered back in the day. Again, I can't launch anything from the desktop and it's not because active desktop is turned on because even if I were to go in here to turn it on, it still doesn't do anything. So. Yeah, if anybody's got any insight on that, let me know, because I'd be interested in seeing what the deal is and why it's not working. I have to assume it's the registry. And, of course, I can't launch Windows Explorer, or at least I can't launch it from the desktop, but I can launch it from the start menu. See, it's, like, so weird. Like, you can launch Windows Explorer from the start menu, but you can't launch any other programs. Actually, that didn't even do jack crap, and it locked the computer up again. Flipping great. Seriously? All right, hopefully this is the last time I gotta restart this damn thing. One thing I've also observed is that when it's loading, it like sharply stops accessing the hard drive and the mouse cursor still shows busy. So I'm not sure if it's a process that's within here that's stopped responding or what the deal is, but someone will probably have a better idea of all that stuff more than I will. So anyways, um, I think that was pretty much everything other than this Presario Treasures, which I suppose we can try to take a look at here. But I don't know. I think that's based on the internet. I think that's just basically something that was in the out-of-box experience. But obviously it's not going to work anymore because obviously we don't have access to it. Oh, now it decides it wants to launch from the desktop. Go figure, right? So as you can see, it's trying to access stuff on the internet. <laughs> I love that ginormous compact server. But unfortunately, it's... I don't have anything connected to the modem. You can't redirect this to go out the ethernet, so it's basically useless. And even interestingly enough, you can hear the modem clicking into action. It's kind of interesting. And then if I hang up, you can hear the little relay in there clicking on and off. It's pretty interesting. But that basically is useless, so no point in trying to make it work because I'm pretty sure HP took that site down a long time ago. But anyways, I think that's about all there is on this computer. Now that it's decided it actually wants to let me load stuff from the start menu now, which is kind of odd, but okay. I don't know what the deal is as far as the software instability is concerned. Another thing, there's no reset button on this computer. So yeah, if you have an issue, you either have to pull the plug or hold the power button down. I wonder. I uh, just probably just shut it down. That's probably okay. I don't really need this anymore for the rest of the video. So yeah, that'll do it for this demonstration, or probably the crappy lack thereof demonstration, of this compact Presario 5441 computer. Basically similar to that of a compact Presario 2266, although this one is based on AMD, not Cyrix. So admittedly, it's probably a better machine, but not by much, but I digress. So hopefully this was an interesting enough video uh, hopefully I can figure out the software stuff at a later time, but that's what I got for this video. So if it was okay enough for you all, give it a like, because that actually helps out quite a bit. It lets me know how I'm doing with my videos. The other button works as well if you didn't like it, which totally understand. And that's about all I can really say. So thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to click that lovely button down there that says subscribe on it. And yeah, that's it. So See you all in the next video.